Now the other thing about working with these shapes, we can kind of get to know the brush editor a little bit now. So why don't we uh, actually take a peek at that, right? So over here on your properties editor, the brushes area is actually a lot more interesting than you might think. If you want to just pick a solid colored brush, then this default is going to be great for you. Okay, it's going to default to a solid colored brush. And just using this little area, right, I can just go ahead and kind of change what color I want. Maybe I want to get some shade of blue. Right? And notice how it's basically changing the ARGB values. I could get in here myself and type in a value manually. Maybe I'll come over here and get this guy a different color. Okay. So again, we're just working with this idea of a solid colored brush. And the markup will just simply record the hex value for the fill property. Now the reason it set the fill property and not, for example, the stroke property, you know, based on whatever you select in your designer, the brushes editor will show you all the things that require brushes. So if I really wanted to change the stroke property, just go ahead and click it up here. And um, let's see, why don't we just give him maybe a, a red stroke, right? Maybe I'll change that stroke thickness to 10 so we can see it a little bit easier. But we're still operating in the world of solid colored brushes. So let's say you want to do a more exotic brush, right? You want to go ahead and do some kind of a gradient brush. Well, here are a couple of tricks that you can do with blend. Step number one, and let's, let's go ahead and maybe select uh, this guy. Let's make a, a radial gradient brush over this circle. You're gonna come over here and pick your gradient brush tab. And now you got a choice to make. Do you want to do a linear gradient or do you want to do a radial gradient? Right, so I'll pick on this guy. Now, as soon as you do that, Right, and you start to uh, oh, when I get to the fill property here. As soon as you do that, okay, you'll see that Blend will give you two gradient stops by default. So focus over here on these little thumbs. Right, basically the the starting and ending colors. So I picked the radial gradient. I click on this thumb, and we can see that the starting color is going to be black. And if we look over on our designer, that's representing this area right here. The ending color is white, and that just kind of fades out over time, right, to get to this outer part. Well, these little thumbs can be dragged around. So if I want the, uh, you know, the black area to take up a larger part of the real estate just by dragging the thumb, you can see what's happening there in my designer. I could also change this over here too. So if you don't want it to be a fade from black into white. You just have to click the thumb you want to change, and then we're back over here to the color editor, right? So maybe we'll start with um, maybe kind of a darker blue, and I want to end with maybe a bit of a lighter blue, something like that. And, you know, maybe I'll kind of change that a teeny bit. Okay. So as I'm working with this part of the editor, if I flip back over to my markup, we're going to see now. And actually, this happened just because I accidentally had the stroke property selected. So I could actually kill this. We could just go manually back up here. Let me just say a stroke of uh, black. Okay. But the interesting part took place down here. So notice how each one of my gradient stops has been given a hexadecimal value for the color. The offset was tweaked based on my dragging of the thumbs. And because I clicked on that radial gradient button, it gave me the radial gradient brush. Well, what if you want to have more gradient stops? All you got to do is click right on top of this little editor. So maybe I want to have a, you know, a really dark brush to begin with. Maybe this guy is going to be a tad more blue. Right? Or we could even, you know, make this guy green for all I care. Right? Something like that. Okay, so now as I'm playing around with these particular parts of the editor, that just basically added in this brand new gradient stop. Okay? Now notice by default, the origin of the gradient is in the dead center. Right? 
well, maybe you want that to start on an offset. So here's a little shortcut key for you. On the, the designer, when you have the item selected, just press the G key. Now notice I didn't say Control G. Okay, definitely don't think you're in Visual Studio. Most of the uh, keyboard shortcuts are simply one letter. You know, V X G. Well, as soon as you pick the G key, you're going to notice that we get this other part of the editor. Okay, see how I can kind of spin this around to change where that gradient stop's going to start. Okay, so I can spin it over here. Maybe come back over here and let's maybe make him a little bigger and more pronounced. So as I'm working with this here, right, keep playing with it, that's just going to basically be controlling my gradient origin. So what I want to point out here isn't so much what a, what a beautiful circle I've made, and that's a joke obviously, but this kind of markup here would be just so tedious to type in in Visual Studio. You know, especially when you think about, uh, you know, you're working with things like gradient stops and uh, trying to control hex values for things, that's, that's no fun. So when we work with this integrated brush editor, we just get a much easier visual experience. Okay? So let me just flip back here to my slide deck and kind of catch us up. So remember what we're, we're kind of looking at here, right? Um, Blend has a fairly one-to-one -one correspondence for all the members of this toolkit. Right, so we've already talked about what the shapes bring to the table. When you're working with pens and pencils, that's pretty much how you work with polygons and polylines. But remember that internally, they're going to be represented as paths. I pointed out some things you can do here with the combined area. Uh, we talked about working with the brush editor, right? So here's a slightly more interesting brush, not as ghastly ugly as the one I put together. And again, working with Blend, all of this kind of stuff is going to be done through the brush editor. So I've already kind of walked through this with you, uh, just by way of a quick reminder. Based on what you select on your designer, you're going to find a series of properties up here that are all brush aware. Right? So all those things could receive as input some kind of a brush object. So pick your poison. Remember, this area is where you kind of pick the type of brush you want to work with. Um, probably most commonly, you're going to be sticking to these two. You either want to have a solid brush or a gradient brush. But this guy can also be helpful. That basically means no brush. <laughs> Blend has a habit of using the previously created brush to fill new geometries. So you might be surprised when you draw a brand new shape and it suddenly takes on the same brush that you just built on the other guy. Well, you can just click that button right there to kind of get it back to square one. This guy's obvious. Just go ahead and pick your color. This part here is maybe not so obvious. Um, one thing which, oh, well, I should say maybe another thing which drove me batty as I was getting my bearings with blend is I was down here inside of my little gradient stop editor, right? And I'm adding a whole bunch of things, kind of playing around. And suddenly I'm like, oh man, I've added way too many gradient stops. How do I get rid of these things? Well, being a Visual Studio kind of guy, I was doing what you would probably do. I was right clicking on these darn gradient stop thumbs all day. I was trying to hit the delete key. I was doing everything, right? Nothing was working. Well, then I finally figured out all you got to do is just drag it off. Just click and drag it anywhere off that sliding area. And that will delete the thumb. Right? <laughs> to me, not obvious, but I never claimed to be a bright man. So uh, definitely just remember that. It'll hopefully save you some frustration.